Hey, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy X coming at y'all with a brand new video. And as you guys can see, we're here again with the tier list. This one doing the top point guards in NBA 2K21, my team. So if you guys are excited, make sure you guys smash that like button down below and make sure you guys comment which one of the PGs that we have on this list is going to be your favorite. I decided to opt out of cards like the Steph Curry because nobody really has them. Same with the Pink Diamond Token Market cards. I didn't put those in just because not too many people are able to get to those yet. So I want to leave those off as well as like, you know, a lot of the Sapphire, Emerald and Gold, you know, 20 collection cards. I just didn't feel like it was really too important to have them on the list so we left a few of them out but we're here starting it off with the amethyst world b free who honestly i feel like is a really really solid card there's really not anything bad about him um, he just gives you a lot of really nice things on the offensive end has two hall of fame badges i think as a um, amethyst card which is actually kind of insane so for me world be free could be um between that b or a tier depending on how you feel about him uh for me personally i feel like he very solidly fits um into that a tier he just does so many things well for me on the offensive end that the fact that he doesn't have the greatest of defense i can definitely get over it um and just you know have a great time with him um, and next up, we have the Sapphire Wolf Razor card, who is an insane, insane defender for a Sapphire card. And I feel like that really um, helps him out. But um, contrary to the Will Be Free that we just went to, Wolf Frazier does have that really, really, really good defense um, with that gold clamps. But his offensive ability is a little bit lackluster, and he's really not super quick. Um, like, he really only is going to be hitting layups. But because he has some of the best defense in the game and he is free, it's pretty nice. Although the free really doesn't matter too much to us for our capabilities here. We're going to throw our guy, Walt Frazier, in it to the B tier. I feel like he, he he can fit there pretty well. Good defense, all that sort of stuff. And next is Terrell Brandon. Terrell Brandon, I feel like, is a baseline minimum. You're throwing him at the A tier just because of how amazing um, he is at running the floor. You know, he has an insane speed, like in the 90s for his speed as well as um, a pretty decent jump shot and a pretty decent three-point rating. Um, the defense, again, LEGO will be free, is not going to be great. But I think with all of the wonderful things that he gives you on the offensive end, again, I feel like there's no way you can put him below A. He also is only 5'11", but at this point, I think our tallest PG is only 6'4". So for the time being, it's really not that big of a deal that he's a little bit um, understized. Now, the next guy that we have is the Diamond Stefan Marbury that you get for playing Triple Threat offline, who's a really solid, basically D-Rose clone, which is awesome. But the one thing that makes him slightly worse than D-Rose is the um, Amethyst D-Rose that we'll cover later has half quick first step, whereas our guy Stefan Marbury does not. Only has it on gold, but he's still super quick and dunk the ball really great. Has nice playmaking, good shot, three, all of that sort of stuff. And I think when it comes to PGs, um, if Stefan Marbury isn't in the S tier, then I really don't know what's going on. And my guy just has such insane defense overall, or offensive again overall, that I feel like there's no way he isn't in, you know, the uh, S tier. Um, next up, you can see we have the Amethyst Stefan Curry, who is again another card that I feel like is pretty difficult um, to rank because depending on how much you want to shoot with your PG, which hopefully is a lot, <laughs> you can move him somewhere between um, the A to S tier. Steph Curry, a really, really, really consistent shooter, also has some nice finishing ability. Um, again, like a lot of the cards on this list, doesn't have the greatest of defense, but I do feel like he can fit solidly in to the S tier. Some nice layup animations. Overall, I feel like Steph just does everything great. And with his jump shot, out of all of the ones tested, has like a top five uh, make percentage when it comes to just total makes that you get um, inside the green window. Stephen Curry's jump shot is massively up there. So I think super, super solid card. Uh, next up, we have the Sapphire Russell Westbrook, who I definitely feel like is a card that gets a little bit too much hate because he has a bad three-point shot but realistically if we think about it this way if you're going into a game of unlimited how much are you actually shooting the ball you know what i mean now his defense isn't great so that is a little bit tough and no goal badges so that's the reasons that i feel like he is down in to a c tier card but i do not feel like by any means that this russell westbrook is d tier i feel like with how great he can run the floor um and finish at the basket it really is a solid card i know he can't shoot the three ball 
But if I'm being honest, I haven't seen too many people who actually use their PGs in unlimited or even limited as shooters. So I really don't feel like it's that big of a deal um, that he can't shoot. So that's just me. Uh, next up, we have the Sapphire Ricky Rubio. Now, if we're talking about offline for just <laughs> random stuff, I think this Ricky Rubio is actually one of the best offline PGs that you can use because he has Dimer on Gold as well as Floor General and Needle Thudder along with Lob City Passer. So he's been the PG that I'm actually using when it comes to Evoing up my artist Gilmore because he has amazing playmaking. But he can't dunk the ball at all. His layup stats are a little bit low. He's not the greatest at mid-range shooting. He's not the greatest at three-point shooting. He has Gold Pick Pocket but no really good defense other than that. And He's only got like 80 speeds, so really the only thing that this Ricky Rubio provides you is playmaking, so I think I'm going to have to throw Ricky Rubio in the D tier. Now, there is a niche of players that might be able to use Ricky Rubio amazing and absolutely love him, but for me, he falls pretty flat just because of that, but if we were just talking offline, I think he's absolutely amazing. Next up, we have the Ruby Rajan Rondo. Now, I'm going to be ranking this Rajan Rondo like post evo because he's an absolute god post evo now rondo before evo doesn't really look like he's too great but if you guys haven't actually done the evo for rondo he gains huff pickpocket as well as gold clamps on there which makes him absolutely insane has a really good speed a decent jump shot he can't dunk but i do feel like rondo again like we did with walt frazier his defense post evo really helps him out and if you guys are wondering what his evo is it's only like 50 points and 20 assists so it's really not too big of a deal to get it done um and i feel like he's pretty on a par with somebody like a walt frazier post that evo because half pickpocket is just so nice and so spammy that you really can get away with it uh next up we have the amethyst nick van exel I know a lot of people love this Nick Van Exel card, and rightfully so, because he's got a 92 speed, so he fits the meta, a decent three-point shot of an 85 with the Vince Carter release, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but it's definitely not bad. Has quick first step, has all the beautiful things that you want. So honestly, I didn't like him at first, but I feel like Nick Van Exel is a very similar card to Terrell Brandon. You know, has really good finishing, really quick. So I feel like I gotta throw him into the A tier. He's just a really solid all-around card. And the same goes with this Nate Archibald. With this Nate Archibald, I'm kind of, I'm in between an A to an S tier. But the thing that's holding me back is somebody like Stephen Marbury. The one thing that he doesn't have is defense. But he's insane at everything else. Nate Archibald, the one thing he doesn't have is defense and dunking. Even after he's up to Pink Diamond, I have him at Pink Diamond. And he's still missing a few things for me. So I feel like I'm going to have to throw Nate Archibald only in A, even post-Evo. Just because Nate Archibald gets some amazing boosts post Evo. He gets up to an 80 driving dunk, I'm pretty sure, and some better defense. But the thing is, he doesn't gain any sort of clamps, so he still can't play too great a defense. And his dunking really just isn't there. So while he is one of the fastest cards in the game with a 96 speed and has amazing layup stats in the Paul George base, I just can't put him up there. Later in the year, if we get a Pink Diamond or even Opal Nate Archibald that can dunk, he could be an absolutely insane card. But for me right now, I feel like A is kind of his, his peak. Um, next up, we have Mike Bibby, who was a card that when I used, I absolutely hated him. I just did not like Mike Bibby. For some reason for me, he just felt like only a playmaker. He just, he really wasn't finishing in the basket like I wanted to. And sometimes he wasn't even hitting shots um, as much as I wanted to. But um, since using him again the second time, and just kind of getting used to him doing some of the challenges for him, I have liked him a little bit more. He's another one of those cards where you are going to be scoring and playmaking, not exactly playing any sort of defense with him at all. I feel like he he solidly fits in it to the B tier. I don't think he's insane by any means, but he's an overall solid card that gives you everything that you need. And next up, Maurice Cheeks, one of my favorite budget cards in the entire game. Maurice Cheeks is amazing. And some of you guys might be wondering why, and I'll explain. Maurice Cheeks, six foot one, 17 gold badges, gold clamps, pickpocket, and pick dodger. With interceptor as well, a 97 perimeter defense and an 86 steal. Also can speed boost right off rip, has a 73 point shot, so he can be pretty consistent with them as well. Really good speed, has gold quick first step, has dimer. He's an absolute beast. I think for a sapphire card, we are really 
tipping over the iceberg what a good card is. And I'm going to have to throw him up into a tier. Like, Maurice Cheeks is an absolute beast. If you haven't tried him out, pick him up, give him a shot. Because I think when I picked mine up, he was like 1.2k. And he was an absolute demigod. Uh, next up, Kyle Lowry. This one's easy, S tier. This Ruby Kyle Lowry for a free card is just absolutely insane. He has a money release. He can finish at the basket. Great. Has some really solid defense as well. The playmaking is just godly. I think for a free card that you get from just leveling up, he's amazing. I'm almost at him, and I just cannot wait because he is seriously, seriously, is just a top tier card. There's not, really not too many better than this Kyle Lowry. And I would argue, I don't really think there are many that are better. Anyway... We do have Ruby Kenny Smith, who is up next. And Kenny Smith is a card for me that's interesting because I really didn't find him too impressive when I looked at his stats or even used him in general. But there's a lot of people who I do think like him. And that's because he's got a nice speed. He can finish at the basket. Great. Has a really solid three-point shot. but um, And he can dunk. So he just really can't play defense. And that's the one thing that I feel like is missing out from his game so again i feel like he's pretty solidly fitting into our a tier category um that we got going on here you know he's just missing that one big thing that is defense um in there so you know it is what it is and next up we got jerry west again this one is very very easy for me s tier jerry west i absolutely love his jump shot this year and he has insane shooting sets he can finish the basket really great and his defense is overall beautiful like absolutely beautiful next up we have jeff teague who i actually feel like is a little bit slept on as well now i do not think jeff teague by any means is an insane card but he's got a good playmaking he's got quick first step and downhill so he's super quick with his nice 85 speed so on top of that with those really nice good playmaking can shoot the three ball okay has some nice dunking stats as well overall a decent card in general but he does have a set shot which i do think holds him back but I do think he can fit into the B tier. Like he can do a little bit of everything besides defense. Um, so I, I just I don't feel like he warrants being anywhere below B or anywhere above B. Uh, next up we have Jason Kidd, who this year actually his jump shot, well still being awkward and slow, has a pretty nice green window and a really nice total make percentage. So overall for Jason Kidd, I feel like he's actually a really 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 solid card. And I mean, Jason Kidd has just that defense man <laughs> like he has that defense also has three half badges which is nice and i think some of the higher end on um, gold badges as well super quick again the defense is great just he can't dunk and for me i feel like a lot of those cards have to have almost everything to be up into a tier with um stefan marbury kind of being the exception where he's so good at offense that you can negate the fact that he doesn't play defense jason kidd um with his better but albeit not great jump shot i feel like we're still just barely missing that you know s tier selection uh next up we have diamond isaiah thomas a card that just recently came out as well and he's actually really solid isaiah thomas is a little bit undersized but i think i said ricky rubio was one of the better playmakers in the game if i didn't that's what i meant but the best playmaker in the game right now is isaiah thomas because he has hall of fame dimer floor general and tight handles also has gold clamps he's stupid quick with a 94 speed he can still hit the three ball pretty decent with a 76 shot which is amazing has a decent driving dunk at 65 as well overall super super solid card and if i had to say one thing that he wasn't amazing at it would probably be shooting just because he only has corner special typical shots and silver catch so honestly the only thing i feel like he really can't do is play defense but i mean not is play defense is you know shoot the three ball great and I feel like because he's quick and is finishing at the basket like Terrell Brandon, but has better defense than Terrell Brandon, I'm honestly going to throw the Isaiah Thomas card up into S tier. Now, I do feel like there's some people who might not like um, that selection, but I feel like Isaiah Thomas, his defense is just so good. His playmaking is so amazing, and he can, he can just rim run with the best of them. I feel like he's a really, really, really solid card. Next up, we have Gus Williams, the guy that everybody loves because he's super cheap and is super quick. The thing with Gus Williams is his playmaking is insane, his finishing is absolutely amazing, but he can't play defense and he can't dunk as well, So the, or really shoot for that matter. So that's three big negatives for me that kind of really hurt him. But when it comes to that rim running, just getting a bunch of layups and going crazy at the paint, I feel like he definitely really, really has that going on. And he is very similar 
um, to Terrell Brandon. Now, Terrell Brandon can shoot the three ball better and can dunk a little bit more than Gus Williams. So if I had to be honest, I would say that Gus Williams is a slightly worse version of Terrell Brandon. But I, I'm tossing with whether or not I want to put him into B tier. And I just feel like at this point with how awful his defense is and the fact that he can't dunk or shoot and his only really niche is rim running, I'm going to have to put Gus Williams into B tier. He's just, for me, lacking a little bit. Uh, next up, we have the Diamond Gary Payton. And Gary Payton, again, is one of those cards where the defense is just insane. But Gary Payton really can't do too much outside of that. Like, he has Hoff, Pick Dodger, Pick Pocket, and Tyler's Defender, which are amazing. Has Gold Clamps as well. His playmaking is okay. His shooting is okay. Has a good jump shot as well. They, they niced him on that. His speed is really good, again, but he can't dunk, and he's just doesn't have any shooting badges so although he has good shooting stats with a 79.3 and an 89 midi he has no badges whatsoever to help him out so you're really just relying on how well you can time your jump shot um in that green window there's no boost to it whatsoever so gary payton is a tough one for me and i feel like he's just not up to par with a guy like kyle lowry with jerry west isaiah thomas so i just i kind of have to put him into a tier i just don't feel like he's up there with that next up we have fat lever I really just hate saying that name, but Fat Lever is honestly a really solid card. One of the better ones on the diamond token market um, tier, and he's just really good at basically everything. He's got gold clamps, which is amazing. Um, he can't dunk either, but he can shoot okay. Has silver steady, which I don't really like, and a lot of his silver shooting badges aren't the greatest. Like, as a PG, he has silver pick and popper and silver clutch shooter, two badges that are like, okay, whatever. So... That does hurt him a little bit, but he's super quick. He can run around and get all the layups that you would want. But again, I don't feel like I would ever pick him over somebody like Terrell Brandon just for that offensive ability, just because even though Terrell Brandon's short, he can still absolutely kill it. So for me, Fat Lever does fall um, a little bit short. I just don't feel like I really like him as much. So we're going to drop Fat Lever in to B tier. Like I'd rather pick up somebody who can do some pretty decent things and actually if i'm looking at it if i do have fat lever in the b tier i probably should also drop maurice cheeks down because he's kind of the same as fat lever so we're gonna do that and we're gonna move over kenny smith um at jason kidd and gary payton just for the sake of consistency i don't feel like we can have maurice cheeks in that a tier if we have fat lever down in the b tier it just it doesn't make sense you know what i mean and next up we have earl monroe earl monroe actually again really 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 solid card um off the diamond token market as well which is pretty nice and six foot three good height has a bunch of really nice cold badges 30 of them solid but the defense is not there we can shoot three ball great we're really quick we have decent defensive stats but we have no clamps whatsoever to help us out with that so it's a little bit tough. So Earl Monroe is always that guy that I feel like is really hard to rank, but he's got a really decent jump shot and he has, you know, good stats overall, but the defense, it does hurt him. So I feel like he fits into our A category, you know, having a lot of really, really, really good things about him, but missing that one or two things that would, you know, skyrocket him up into that S tier. And next up, Derek Rose, one of the only guys with Hoff quick first step. I'm putting him up into S tier. Um, some people might put him lower because he doesn't have defense. But the same thing with Stephen Marbury. They're so good at offense that I just can't put him any lower. I know D. Rose isn't the greatest defender, all that sort of stuff, but he's just so quick. Hawk quick first step. You can't deny it. He's amazing. Next up, Dennis Johnson, who's one of those cards that you're throwing in there to play some amazing defense, and that's really it. Isn't going to shoot the three ball great for you. Isn't going to finish at the basket insane, but is going to finish at the basket pretty well. But he's in there with that Hoff clamps to just clamp guys up and play make a little bit. You know what I mean? So I do feel like he fits in to the B tier pretty well. Pretty well. I, I like the selection of B tier. You know what I mean? And next up, we have Ruby Damian Lillard. Another card that I actually, I quite like. I don't hate Damian Lillard. I don't, you know, not like the fact that he's in the game. But it's like... Damian Lillard really hasn't jumped out at me. I picked him up, and again, it's the same case with Russell Westbrook, where he just has so many silver badges, no real gold badges. His defense is just really awful, and he doesn't even have the speed to rim run insanely well. Um, it can also shoot it okay, 
Um, it's the same thing. I just don't feel like Damian Lillard is really up to par with a lot of the guys that we have at B tier, um, other than maybe um, Jeff Teague. I feel like Jeff Teague and Lillard are, are fighting for their spot. And in saying that, I might move Jeff Teague down the C tier. I'm not really, I'm not really feeling him up at B with everybody else. If I'm being honest, so we're gonna move Damian Lillard over in here to C tier as well as Jeff Teague. This is. There's not a lot of things that I really want to bring Lillard in. And if I'm going to pick up a PG whose niche is just, you know, driving to the basket, getting some finishes and hitting the occasional three, you know, I'm probably going to go ahead and pick up Kenny Smith, who's, a, you know, same price, or pick up Nick Van Exel for free. Yeah, I'm probably not going to go ahead and snag that Damian Lillard off the auction house, especially if I've already got the Sapphire one for free. It's really just... You know, he's the lack of gold badges. I feel like is really what what hurts my guy Lillard. And last but not least, we have Bob Cousy, who very easily fits into the S tier. Um, you get him through the exchange, but he's really, really solid. Bob Cousy just has everything going for him: a good defense, good playmaking, good finishing at the basket, which is basically all you need to be a top card this year. Is just finish at the basket, great. And he's got four Hall of Fame badges. Um, I think it's Acrobat, Fancy Footwork, Giant Slayer, and Teardropper, all of which are really nice. Um, the only thing he really can't do is dunk, but with how great he can finish just doing layups, how great he can shoot his playmaking, how good it is, and the defense that he has with the gold clamps and pickpocket, I feel like solidly puts him in to S tier. Um, when it comes to this year and my team, I feel like we have a lot of really, really good cards. Most of these will probably phase out as time goes on. The only guys that I feel like really have potential to stay really long are maybe Kyle Lowry and Kuzi. Other than that, most of these guys are probably going to fall slowly down the tiers as we move on. But this is our final PG's tier list for NBA 2K21, my team. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. Like if you guys did enjoy, subscribe if you guys are new on the road to 10K. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you all in the next video.